Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another DOS Audio web webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about DOS AIM, uh, the third final portion of our East Focus, DOS Net uh, webinars, and, and so on and so forth. This is actually a new protocol of ours that allows us to use FAR filters to be able to balance our frequency response amongst the audience area. Um, just so you know, if you uh, the softwares that we're going to be using to be able to accomplish these tasks are going to be in the chat and the welcome message. You'll be able to download East Focus with all of our latest GLLs and our, our latest version of DOSnet. So to start, again, this is our newest uh, protocol that's allowed us to use all of these softwares in Junction uh, to, to be able to balance our frequency response amongst our audience area. Also being able to remove sound or as much sound as possible from certain areas we don't need to try to take care of any reflections or so on and so forth. Um, to get us introduced into DOSAIM, I'm gonna start to play a video that pretty much describes everything about DOSAIM and then we'll go in a little further in depth on how every feature actually works with the softwares, uh, both EaseFocus and DOSNet, uh, demonstrating with our Arrow 20 and or Arrow 40 system. So let's start with the video. DAS Audio welcomes FirmMaker technology for the Arrow 20A and Arrow 40A advanced line array systems. DAS AIM is a high tech solution that designs custom fur filters for each cabinet in an array. The magnitude and phase response of every frequency of each cabinet can be acted upon individually. With DAS AIM, the performance of your DAS Aero Series 2 can easily be upgraded to a new level, providing a more adaptive and flexible audio solution for your live events and installations. DAS AIM makes the future of audio available today. Thanks to the powerful DSP units employed, no external multi-channel processors or processed amplifiers are needed. This key advantage of the DAS systems over others equates to a very significant reduction in cost, cabling, and setup time. This provides the Aero 20A and Aero 40A with important new features that add flexibility and versatility to these already outstanding systems. Once the array has been installed with DAS AIM, the vertical dispersion pattern of the array can be adapted to your needs without physically having to change the height or splay angles of the array. Here is an example of the typical behavior of a line array system. Having set the height and splay angles of the cabinets, variations in the SPL with distance, and differences in tonal balance from front to rear are perceivable. Now, optimizing the system's performance is a simple process. After introducing precise venue information into Ease Focus, the acoustic predictions and fur filter designs are ready to be performed. This provides a fast and easy way to compare the results of different filter sets. Finally, you just have to export the fur filters from EaseFocus to DOSnet and with just a few clicks, send them directly to the cabinets. With DOSAIM, the systems can be configured to match the desired performance objectives. Being able to adapt the vertical dispersion pattern of the array permits the control of the decrease in SPL level with distance. Also, uniform frequency response from front to back can be achieved. We can lower the SPL created by the array if there is no audience there. DAS AIM Processing Solution. Empower your aero system. The future is now. For more information, contact us at dasaim at dasaudio.com. So yes, that is actually a quick overview of what we're gonna get into today. Um, as you saw, Ease, uh, DOS AIM is a process uh, using Ease Focus, uh, DOSnet, and e being able to export FIR filters from Ease Focus into DOSnet to be able to send them into our boxes. Today, we're, again, we're going to be talking about the ways the, these optimizations of uh, FIR makers will help us attack our venues as, so, uh, as we want to see fit. Uh, we'll go through all the options in the menu, plus how to get into the advanced configuration and dive in a little bit deeper to get exactly where you want to be. 
Finally, we'll also be exporting the files from East Focus and then importing into DOS AIM, I mean DOSNet, to be able to send them into the boxes themselves. Now, the only thing that we're gonna not be able to do today is physically send them into the boxes. One, we're doing this over the web and I'm at home. I actually don't have a DOSNet processor and the, the uh, boxes with me, but we'll be able to configure everything on, on our offline mode to be able to test and um, at least get accustomed to how to upload them into our softwares. So optimizations with FIR Maker. Uh, before we continue, uh, the first thing we're going to go over is, you know, our, our East Focus one last time. This is all, uh, everything I'm going to talk about now, we can get more in depth in our East Focus part one, all these windows and, and so on and so forth. But just to, to uh, give you a quick overview, on our left side, we start with our project uh, properties and object properties, which we'll be able to manipulate our, our devices that are in the top view um, or side view. Also, project properties will allow us to have um, all of our information from the from our project itself. We can put our name uh, and temperature and, and project settings, so on. Again, all of this information is in the first one. Top views, we're going to be moving all of our project uh, objects around, being able to test, and manipulate, and see mapping. Um, rigging is going to give us all our information about each individual cluster. And then our bottom view around here is our side view, which will tell us all of our vertical coverages and we'll be able to see some mapping on there as well. We also have some other tabs, you know, level, frequency response, time response, which we'll be able to get more information of how our speaker is working amongst our audience areas. Um, so yeah, once we have our, our devices and we place one into our top view, we get our, uh, and we have defined our our audience areas, we'll now be able to use our auto display to get the angles that we need uh, for each boxes. And uh, pretty much once we do, we can dive into our optimization settings. So normally when we first put in our, our speakers, this is what our typical array works. We have hot spots and a little and places that are a little bit uh, quieter. None of ours, uh, there's no two spots that are the same. You know, this is we run into this issue all the time, setting up all types of speakers, especially line arrays. The further you go, the less highs you have, and the less amplitude you have, and the closer you are, it gets hotter, um, I mean, it's, uh, more more dB level, and and there's not a great balance amongst the entire audience area. You know, every doubling of distance will lose 6 dBs, um, and, and it causes a bunch of cancellations in certain parts for us as well. But being able to use optimization FIR filters, we can be able to change all of these audience areas, uh, the, the frequency response, and have them more united. We can bring them closer together, balance out our frequency response and level over, over distance. So as you walk from the front of the stage all the way to the back of the, uh, of the venue, or even on the second floor, that will be no more than a few decibels off, two to three, maybe even four at max, uh, where before we'll, we'd be upwards of six to seven dBs, depending on dis distance and, and uh, horizontal uh, placement. Again, with DOSNet, uh, DOS AIM optimization and without DOS uh, AIM optimization, we'll be balancing not only our mid range, our high range, but a little bit of our low range. Uh, just so you know, DOS AIM really focuses more of on top boxes than it does in our subwoofers. Subwoofer frequencies are a little bit too long for us to control. We have another process that we can do that uh, of controlling our, our sub range, and that's mainly our sub arc. Now that's uh, balancing out our, our subs for placement, distance, and delaying them uh, to create kind of a coverage. So in a way, this is a similar way of working, but instead of with subs, we're doing it on the top and then we're using FIRs to be able to use all pass filters and other equalizations to be able to cancel in certain places and, and sum up in certain places. So we can go from the response of having almost, as you can see in the top view, uh, from 96 at 63, uh, 630 hertz to the first microphone, which is most likely 106 dB. 
to having a, almost just a 2 dB dif or 4 dB difference from 96 to 100. We'll be able to balance everything a little bit, uh, um, a lot better and be able to walk amongst the area and everybody have a, a much closer experience, uh, similar experience than, than it would be before. So again, FIR filters, all we're doing here is make uh, each box is going to be receiving a separate FIR depending on where it's point, uh, where it's pointing uh, and be able to work together. Each box will be able to work together to balance out that frequency. Uh, if we have too much sound in the front, it will try to cancel out some of those frequencies that are over summoning and move it across the audience area. Each box is working in respect to the ones next to it or across from it to be able to, uh, ba again, balance out. The whole idea of this is balancing out our frequency ranges and our magnitudes across our, across our audience areas. These options right here are uh, the optimization options for, um, for Dossane. If I go to our ease focus, we're going to be able to select uh, once we've dropped one our array into the project. Uh, ob, uh, once we drop the array into our top view, we'll be able to select our array and see the angles that we already tested uh, placed in there, so we can cover the audience area that we need uh, and be able to start creating our FIR down here. First of all, let me let me delete. This one will start over. Once we've already put our display, we'll be able to compute FIR preset. This will open up this window, which is our FIR channel matrix. As you see, we'll have four, if we have 14 cabinets in our array, we'll have 14 FIRs that we'll be able to uh, uh, set into the array, while one for each box. Just so you know, the minimum amount of boxes that we'll be able to use to get this to work is six units. Anything less than that, the, there will not be enough motors, enough components to be able to properly move, vertically dis, uh, move our, our frequencies, at least in a way that it's going to really change the way we want our systems to react. Um, <clears throat> Once we've uh, set our display, we've opened up this window and see that each cabin is having a single FIR going to it, we'll then be able to focus on our optimization parameters on the right-hand side. The first one that we're gonna select, like we would select in our auto display, is our audience areas. We're gonna wanna select the ones we want to avoid or focus on, uh, I mean, uh, audience, which is to focus on. Uh, we want our PA to and FIR to only work with these uh, audience zones. Avoid is our speaker will not put any account, uh, any, uh, well, avoid will, our speakers will take the areas that we want to avoid and make sure that we put less sound in those areas and then ignore would determine that we want our speakers to not even worry if our audience areas are are in the are in that zone or in that position. So once again, audience areas are the ones that we want to focus on. Avoid is the ones that we want to completely uh, not even be res uh, responsive with. Completely take it out of our calculation. Uh, and ignore is pay no mind to it. That is neither going to affect or um, or change anything that in, in the algorithm. Next, we have uh, property uh, optimization properties. These optimizations properties are going to help us uh, see how much change is it between the different different levels of our or distances in our array. High power is going to maximize in the amount of energy that we have out there, which sounds good, but it might not really balance our frequency range. Center. It's going to give us as much amplitude as power as, as we can, but not really balance out or, or uniform our, our frequencies amongst the audience area. Balance, on the other hand, will will bring it closer together over distance um, 
while still keeping it a little bit separated uh, to keep with uh, to to kind of go with our uh, doubling of distance as well. And then high uniformity is the one that's really going to balance out our frequency response over distances. Strong avoidance is that if we have something to avoid, we can we'll we'll make sure that we can we can focus mainly on taking sound out of places we don't need um, versus of of fully focusing on our audience area. Normally on a day to day, depending on the inside or outside, the main two that I'll focus on are balance and and high uniformity. Reason being, they get me some of the best outcomes in in uh, in responses that I've seen. Now, please feel free to to play with the other ones, but be careful. These are options that could you know really mess with the sound of your of your system. Um, practice with it inside of East, Fo uh, East Focus before you use it into a live. Or if you have time before a show, you know, give yourself a couple of tries on what you want to use on each one. Or, you know, mainly you want to do that before the show uh, while you're testing your gear or, or playing around with FIR. Um, but if you want to making your, uh, your presets before the show, uh, you can definitely run a, a few of them beforehand. It's very easy to interchange between the different ones and kind of see which one works best for you in your environment. Um, custom will allow you to play with each one of them, but I recommend not to really uh, mess with that too much. Just focus on the ones that are there. Balance, high uniformity, and high power would be the ones that would focus on most, but mainly, like I said, balance and high uniformity. Level distribution over audience area. So this is where we get to control, like I said before, the, the, the doubling of distance. Balance helps us keep this a little bit in place, uh, but then I have a little bit more control in, uh, in level distribution. Constant SPL is exactly that, from the front of the, uh, of the audience area to the final of the audience area. We're gonna try to keep it as close together as possible, the same SPL across the board. Uh, typical delay from front to back, that's you know keeping it in in the in the normal way of of how a system degrades over distances, and then SPL reduction per doubling of distance allows me to control the doubling of distance over uh, um, all the reduction over distance. I can keep it normal at six dB for every doubling of distance. I can drop it to three dB or even one point five degree to have a little bit more control in all of our. Um, all of our audience areas. Then we're gonna go into our our system, our advanced settings. In advanced settings, uh, we're gonna be able to select the frequency ranges of our uh, of where we want to focus with our uh, optimization. It starts off from 80 hertz to 16 hertz. But we're actually going to change it to about 125. Uh, again, this works better in our top end than it does into our subs, and we're only going to be putting it into our tops. Even though our speakers might go down to 80 hertz, but the frequencies that are going to really work well to us is already at right about 125 or so and up. Um, I normally select it from 125 and keep it at 16. And normally we're going to want to, you know, have our special resolution all the way at max. It's not going to give you much of a change. Uh, we actually do recommend you stay somewhere right in the middle. It will calculate faster, give you uh, the same amount of quality as you would as high accuracy uh, without having to spend time over creating it. So we'll show some examples of the rest of these in the bottom, but uh, just to go over uh, automatic equalization for uh, retaining response over reference uh, reference receivers. This is interesting. This allows us to sex, uh, select a point of where we where we put in a microphone, meaning let's see, let's see, meaning one of these guys right here, and say, hey, if number three is uh, the position of where our audience area is, I mean our our front of house, then I want the rest of uh, the audience area to be exactly like the the front of house. Now it sounds something ideal, like something we would want to to be able to do, but it tends to be a little bit more problematic. Maybe you know, maybe the the front of house 
at the point of where we're putting this isn't the best sounding. We want everything to kind of work as uh, the same way. So we haven't tuned our system uh, at the point of doing this. But again, this gives us references to see what we need to do. Flat response over audience. This also sounds like something we would want to select all the time. But at the end of the day, it's going to actually take off a lot of SPL uh, because you're trying to put a complete flat response on your system. We're going to put flat in our, our response to our system by tuning our system and using these FIRs to kind of just balance out the, that tuning across the board. So uh, these are all uh, settings that you can use to, to test, uh, but I normally have not found a reason to use it in a live scenario that has worked the best for me. Uh, and finally, uh, before I get to the one I do use, which is max filter gain, uh, flat response with roll off. This actually takes off even more energy uh, because it also takes off the low energy from our tops. Now, again, these are settings that are here that you can use. I'm just giving you my take on what's, what happens when I've used them. Feel free to play around, play around with them uh, when you have a chance uh, in, your, in your office, in your workshop, and stuff like that um, to, to, to understand exactly what each one does. But for me, these two take off a lot more energy than I'm looking for. Uh, without the the full end result that I'm, that I would want, this one I use mainly for testing. But again, it it's to allow you to see how uh, uh, how it it interacts with selecting a position and making that your your main goal or objective. And finally, max filter gain. I normally always use max filter gain for the reason being everything that I'm doing here is going to go in the forefront before my tuning. So I want my system at its max potential to give me as much power as I can while still either balancing my optimization between the front end and the back end or high uniformity, which is balance, uh, flattening everything to be the same response across all levels, um, and so on and so forth. And again, you can play with the different options right here to get a different response, um, so on and so forth. It's also very important to label what you've done in this optimization for the reason being uh, organization. We can do, you know, 20 different ones of these in our in our ease focus just to get an idea of what our our uh, changes will be per uh, per option. But then if we always keep it at optimization one, two, three, four, then we're never going to really know which one is which. So you know, I always try to come up with different um acronyms for for what i've selected uh for an example if the opposite optimization i selected is balance i'll put bell and if i selected constant spl cspl and then i normally select max filter gain so mfg is what i would select um you guys can come up with your own uh out um acronyms and, and organization, but again, always uh, try to label it so you can keep an idea of what you've selected in each one. Uh, next, uh, once I've selected, named it, put the settings that I wanted, what I'm going to ignore, and so on and so forth, I'm going to just press start. It is going to calculate my, my session, my preset. And once it goes through, you're going to see that it pops up right here. Now, we don't see anything right now because I haven't turned on the mapping. And uh, for, for right now, I have only have one FIR selected on one side. I'm going to make sure that I have that main PA, which is the right side, be turned on. And I'm going to bypass the FIR real quick. I'm just going to look at one side real quick. Another thing that you're going to want to do uh, while manipulating or, or monitoring what these changes are is it's best to work in a fixed SPL uh, range for your mapping. So let's let's select uh, this little graph, um, the line chart, the line graph right here, and uh, we're going to select uh, deselect 
automatic scale to manual scale and go from 114 to 90 to get this coloration to, to at least to keep this range exactly where we need to be where we want to see if we also look at our frequency responses we'll see within the three levels uh two three and one that you know without the uh, the balance now we're looking at 500 hertz at about a difference of uh, the blue is 91 99 the red is 103 and the green is 105. i'm going to go ahead and turn on that uh preset that i created and you're going to see that now 500 hertz they're all the same spl the same level which is going to be 102 plus even the curvature of it is um uh following the same the same curve i know that this looks like it's not a lot of information but here's another way that we can see the differences why don't we go into broadband and change from broadband to a third octave and we're going uh, and not to worry about all the different frequencies because we're still in the frequency response looking at all three microphones it doesn't matter if you would change the frequencies we're still looking at broadband here on the, the frequency response so i should have one of that and we're going to change this to z weighted so we can get all the low end we can see all the frequencies as it would be as pink noise not as human hearing so I'm going to bypass it one more time. You're going to see that it's, it's done a separation of, uh, let's look at 630, 98, 101, and 105. So even before we've done the DOS aim or the FIRs, we've already, we were pretty fairly close on a balance amongst the entire audience area, at least in levels, uh, the first level and the second level. But once we turn it on, now we really know that anytime you walk across there, you're going to be completely even. All that frequency is going to be exactly the same. The SPL is going to be exactly the same. Um, and when you start walking across the audience area, you're going to notice that there's barely any difference in, in the change of, uh, of frequency response. Um, so now that we're comfortable on that side, that we want to do that, how do I get that to the other speaker? One of two ways, copy, delete the other one, paste it, but that seems a little bit more destructive than need to. We have this cool little option that's called copy setup to other line arrays. We're gonna use this copy setup to other line arrays, select it, and we're going to select main PA left only because all the other ones are different uh, different boxes and, and we don't want to, uh, ruin what we've done in the other product in, in this project before select main PL, uh, pa left and press ok if i show object list select left we're going to see that it's going to be inserted and activated and now we're in main left and activated if i turn on the left we're going to see a better coverage now of the whole space. I'm going to go back to broadband so we see all the color. Oof, a lot of power, a lot of power. Let's see. Let's go open this to 100. Let's see what we look. Just and 160, 115. See that changes a bit more colors. Awesome. I am now going to take off the other one one more time, just so you guys see the difference again, and then we'll continue going on with the presentation. Take off the one on the left side, I mean the right side, and go to the right side, make sure I bypass it as well. We have to, to do a full check, we have to go and bypass both sides. We see that we've separated each one, I'm going to turn them on one more time. Oh, the coloration is I'll go to automatic real quick. So this is everything off, right? 
our speakers are just normal. We have our 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 filters set the way that we need to, 12 units, uh, long throws if we needed to, mid throws, the other half. You know, we've set everything the way we needed to set and then uh, applied our 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 FIRs in the um, the optimization window, compute FIRs. And then we're going to make sure that we select them on both PAs. And you can see that we have a lot more coverage there and it's more, it's a lot similar on the way it, um, all the areas look, especially uh, down the on axis line. Sorry guys, I'm having a small technical issue with my mouse. There it is. Here we go. So let's talk a little bit about the avoidance feature one uh, again. I've showed you, you know, having added only those uh, two audience areas, and it was avoiding or ignoring the the uh, the third floor because also we are not uh, aiming at the third the third level. Uh, say say we were aiming at the third level, right? With e, with us aim, if we do have a balcony or a, ch or a venue, a place that has a a, a, a balcony area, and we want um, the promoter comes up to you and is like, hey, we are not using the top seats anymore. I know you set up the PA, but we're not using that energy anymore. And you know for a fact that having energy being thrown over there is going to bounce back without any bodies and come back and kind of make uh you know some slap back and and uncomfortableness and 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 not be the best anymore because you don't have the bodies to take to absorb all the uh, all the energy well no worries with the same we can create a another optimization where we select that top floor put it in a void do the rest the same pick high uniformity balance high spl i mean um power, uh, power uh, high power, or constant SPL, you know, do all the same parameters, but be al being allowed to take that energy out without, without having to resplay our boxes or bring it down and remove them um, and, and so on and so forth. So think of DOSHAME as another way to have a, a backup for an instance that has arised. Uh, like I said, your, your client came through and and told you that we are not using that that uh balcony anymore and you want to take it out well no worries we'll be able to use this processing to completely avoid that other balcony or areas that we want less sound in and take it out of the equation with, without having to resplay our boxes or re-angle our boxes um Couple of differences, so you get an idea of what uh, high uniformity, balance, and power have. Like I like I mentioned, without optimization in the first window, you have huge separations between all the different levels. High uniformity gets you really dialed in and close together. Obviously, depending on the magnitude and the size of the event, uh, all of these optimizations would work uh, better or or not as well as you would need as as another one. Uh, but this is why we use each focus to prepare ourselves and test and use it as our, our testing ground to get as close as possible what we would want. So when it comes to the real uh, situation, we know how to attack, how to attack it. Uh, balance, as you see, there's more of a difference, but it's a lot closer together. Differences between each level, is a, it's a lot finer. And then power, uh, again, keeps it closer together than you would without optimization, but kind of just keeps the power of each uh, area a lot um, more where it needs to, well, at least a lot louder where it should be, where, where it normally is. Constant SPL, press gives you the same SPL reading amongst all the areas. Doubling of distance allows you to control the rate of decay per doubling of distance. And then typical this, uh, decay keeps you exactly the same as it would in, in real life. So we're pretty much just going over the different uh, things one more time. I've showed you in, in person, but uh, 
just in a quick overview of, of each one. Our configuration window, advanced window, we have our frequency range uh, where we select our range of frequencies of our, our PA that we want to focus on, uh, uh, balancing, uh, flattening out, balance, balancing, or uh, high uniformity. Uh, that's the range that we're focusing on. And then uh, res uh, resolution is where we want to uh, select our, our the amount of uh, computing power that we want a computer to do. So let's talk about this reference from uh, from from the receiver's point. So anytime that we're focusing on our reference point, it's going to be this. When I go back to frequency response, I select uh, uh, one of my microphones. For some reason, I'm not getting my my window. Yeah, so let's see. Select my PA. Hmm. Normally, I would get a bunch of microphones here. Well, anyways, I would be able to select one of them, and it would flatten out uh, the perception of the uh, of the frequency response. Pretty much where the red line is. If I would select the uh, uh, microphone four or microphone three, it becomes a red line, and it will show me the difference between microphone three and the rest of the 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 microphones per frequency. Uh, this would show you what would happen when we do the optimization. If I selected that one and we saw the differences, it would try to balance all the mi other microphones to be the same response as the one you have selected. Uh, it could be detrimental. It could be great. Uh, something, again, this is all part of the parameters for us to mess around with and, and to make sure what works best for our, our, um, our situation. I haven't used it yet in that way, but I... I um, I recommend you try to get a better understanding of how DOS aim, ease focus, and all of this works. Oh, wrong way. Optimization. So how accurate is this between ease focus and smarts? Well, normally without FIR, we do get a pretty even. Remember, these everything that we do in East Focus, all of our GLLs are designed to be a digital copy of our boxes that we can put in this virtual world and get a a, a very close response to re reality in um in a uh, in East Focus. Now, if I were to compare what's going on with East Focus in Smart uh, in a real scenario, here here's a great example. We have, we'll have three microphones in our positions, near, center, and far, near the PA, center of the audience area, and the furthest point in our, in our audience area, uh, green, uh, blue, green, red. In, in smarts, we will have the same color scheme for uh, our positions. We can notice that depending on what frequency we're looking at, we're seeing a very real likeness to to what we see in ease focus and in smart. Let's look at 4K. At around 4K, we have red underneath, red of green in the middle and blue on top, and then green kind of sticks out above on both of them. Now it's a little bit off there, but again, it gives you the roundabout. This isn't an exact, these aren't the exact same, um, uh, what's it called? Broadband, you know, scaling or octave. This is only goes up to three. We have a more uh, 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 finite uh, octave on the smart one here. But we can see that the lining of it, the curvature of each, of each point is about the same. If we turn on FIR, our ease focus tells us that our lines are a lot closer together. They're a lot more similar. Let's take a look at 1K. 1K, all the lines are together. Now, 1K, they're a little bit spread out here, but if we notice that the general idea of the of the lines have come closer together. If we look at 2K, there's a separation between the three, plus we have a separation between, between the three there. But we can see that the, dis, the differences between without and with is a lot better, a lot more uniform, a lot more balanced. Yeah. So once 
once we've come up with the FR that we want to use in our scenario, how do we move it from ease focus and go into our boxes and start playing with it in real life so we can test this smart and, uh, and ease focus uh, uh, likenesses? Well, once I've done it on one set, you at the end of the day, if you have your PA and it's exactly symmetrical, left and right side, uh, whatever you do to one side, you're going to do the exact same one to the other side. Um, this portion of ease focus and FIR requires a license that you would have to obtain from one of your reps, uh, that, uh, whoever you buy your system from, or if you were, if you buy a system of six boxes or more, this license will come, uh, integrated, uh, will, will be handed to you as well as part of the package for the reason being that you now have enough boxes to utilize this, this, uh, offer. If you don't have this license and you want it, contact your your rep or distributor or whoever uh, you, you're getting your, your product from, and they should be able to point you in the right direction to receive one or at least get you one. Um, so once you have that all installed in here and everything, we're going to go to, it would un, uh, unlock this button for you, that license, export FIR filters. Once I select once I'm ready to export, I'm going to export FIR filter and I get this window right here. This is a very important window. This window can make or break your sound as well. We're always going to keep it and we're always going to do it one way. I wish we could have set it in a way that could uh, leave it the way we need it to. So when you press uh, export, it's already ready to export, but uh, AFMG has not uh, allowed us to do so uh, as of right now. <laughs> Once we select export FIR uh, files, we're going to uh, put it at 48 Hertz, 48K. And then number of taps, taps is the big one. We need to always change this to 384. Why do we need to change this to 384? Uh, this is the, think of, you know, it's a part of the sample rate, part of the, the buffer speed. This is how much points per, uh, how many taps we need to calculate to, to be able to create our FIR. This is a static uh, number, this never changes, and anytime you're going to export it, you have to always change this to 384, okay? And once you do, you will open, it'll open up the save FIR data window, our browser window. What I normally do is I always save it on my desktop and I always want to make another um, folder. I'm, I always like to name this exactly what my file is going to be, whatever I made this file in, um, in the program. So the folder will be named val spl, tspl, and mfg. I'm also going to name the file that, so that way if I have to export a bunch of these files, uh, I can organize them and have them ready, uh, already exported and labeled to, to use them to upload into uh, DOSNet when I'm ready to. So I'm going to name the files themselves the same way. Val, CSV, MFG, save. Let me open up this file first, the folder, go to desktop, go to Val. So if you notice, I have 14 boxes in, our, in my array, thus I have 14 FIRs. Each FIR is labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, all in order of how I need to place it in uh, DOS, um, into the DOSNet. Once I've, I've exported all these, I am ready to go to my show and start aggregating my entire system into DOSNet. You know, I'll be able to export the, um, the reports from East Focus. I've already exported the files into my computer. I'm going to the, the venue and I'm starting to hang my PA. And as I'm hanging my PA, I start writing down all the IDs of my, um, my devices. The reason why we wanna uh, write down all our IDs from as they fly up in a cluster is that I need to make sure that each one of these FIRs that I've created go into the exact 
position that I need it to be. Box uh, FR1 goes to box one, FR2 goes to box two, so on and so forth. I need to make sure that this matrix uh, is going to load exactly how it's designed in this project. How do I how do I confirm that? Well, as you're flying the array, uh, and uh, and you uh, as you're flying the array, box one, two, three, four, five to fourteen, you're gonna start mark writing them down on a piece of paper, or if you've already labeled them, make sure that you write down the name and order that you uh, that you want them to uh, show up on on DOSNet. And as you're aggregating them, when you do auto scan, you'll start putting them in the order of your ID. So if I do six boxes, oh, no, six boxes. Now it opens up this window. But how do I know which idea is which? Well, when we're online, when we do an auto scan and actually find out our boxes, all your boxes will populate here with IDs in them. These are the fixed IDs of every box. These IDs never change on the boxes. The only way it changes on the boxes is if you physically change the DSP on the unit. Otherwise, this ID always stays the same. And to find this ID, it's a sticker next to, um, on the back panels, uh, labeled ID, and it's a little sticker that has the four to six uh, digit number. Once we know the order and we've written it down, we're going to place them in the order that we want here. I'm going to add 14 boxes only because that's how many boxes we have in the project that we're looking, working at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Once I have 14 boxes and, and they're all the same boxes or anything that it can accept FIR, this zone becomes bigger, allowing us, uh, indicating to us that we can insert an FIR to these boxes. Again, we are in offline mode. I'm going to show you how to get it into DOSNet and prepare yourself to send it to each box. But in this case, it's not going to finish the whole regiment only because I don't have physical boxes. Uh, in it. Um, I'm going to load FIR. And once I do, I'm going to select, go back to the folder that I've uh, I created right here and select only the first one. The vice right clicked on, uh, on the zone and it's going, I'm only going to select the first box and press open. Once I said press open, it's going to automatically a cascade the box, uh, the FIR per box that it needs to uh, go to. This is the reason why it's super important to organize your boxes in fit in actuality order of uh, how you have it in real life. So when you go and upload the FIR to DOS and Net, it's going to aggregate box one, your top box, with FIR one, and so on and so forth. Once we do so, we will then be able to send to the boxes. These will then have a percentage that goes on when it's ready. It will turn white and then we'll be able to activate. Um, we should be able to do a quick little video on here and I'm gonna walk you through it one more time. So here we have six boxes. We're online, it's green. They're in order by ID as we needed to, I'm going to load my FIR like I just did before, select only the first uh, um, FIR for the first box, and now it's inside of DOSNet, ready to be sent to each box. Once we, we're ready, we're gonna send to each box, we'll just send FIR, and it's gonna populate, and then now they turn white, which is now we're able to, um, that we know that they're inside the box. Now, the same FIR is going to go to the the other side as well because we're going to have a symmetrical system. So uh, left and right side get the same FIRs uh, and there. Once they're sent to the boxes, now we're going to need to activate it. If you notice, there's a blue button next to it with, that says bypassed. 
once you've loaded an FIR, they first go into bypass and then you will need to activate them to be able to turn them on. By doing this, there's one thing that everybody needs to understand. FIR adds four milliseconds of latency to your main PA. The reason why is that this is a bunch of processing that needs to be done beforehand. So if we were to do a, um, a, a, a process of how we're going to do F, uh, uh, this whole project, we're always gonna start with ease focus. Once we're done with ease focus and we've gotten our desired FIRs, we are going to build our system and aggregate all of our uh, boxes into DOSNet. Once we've aggregated all of our system into DOSNet and, and organized it in the way we need to and set our links and our throws and our number of units, we then apply the FIR filter. Once we've applied the FIR filter, uh, uh, we are now ready to use SMART to, time, to tune our system and time align our system. The reason why is because of those extra four milliseconds of delay. If we were to put this at the end and we've tuned our system and time aligned our system, we and we added, um, we turned on the FIR, we have now introduced four milliseconds of difference into our main PA, which puts our subs out of line, out of time alignment already. So we need to always keep in mind that FIR is a part of the process before we tune our system because of the four milliseconds delay and how we are wanting to balance our system amongst our audience area. We're not gonna balance what we've tuned into it. We want our system to be tuned or, I mean, to be balanced already before we tune it. So that way we have all the confidence in the world that as we change it in one space or in uh, an average of three microphones that we're doing so the same amongst the rest of our, um, our uh, audience area. <clears throat> so this is that has been pretty much the whole process of e, of das uh, das aim going from ease focus implementing it using our our uh let me open up one this window one more time there we go we've we've built our fir uh, going into our ease focus after we've uh, calculated all of our angles and filters, positioning and all that stuff, that we've calculated our, our FIRs. We've made sure that we've uh, selected one FIR to each box, selected what audience areas we want to uh, focus on, uh, our optimization pattern, how well we want our SPL to be covered, uh, our, our resolution, our automatic equalization and named it. We've saved our file. We've then exported it and organized our file into a folder, which then we've introduced into DOSNet after we've built the system and aggregated everything. Uh, being able to send, uh, once we put our system, uh, all our boxes into DOSNet and aggregated in order of IDs, we can then import our filters from ease focus that we've exported into dosnet allowing us to then send it to each box and activate them allow giving us a a balanced response amongst our entire audience areas leaving us ready to finalize our system tuning and time alignment to better get uh our to better get uh, even coverage and more responsiveness of our system amongst our audience areas uh, I'm going to open up now the last few minutes to uh, to questions. I know this was a, a lot of information that we're going, and we went pretty thoroughly through it. Uh, any other information that you need of DOS uh, uh, DOSnet, you can find it in our East Focus our, our webinars that should be on YouTube, pre-recorded. And anything that you need on East Focus. For more information will be on our all older webinars part one and two that you'll find on, on youtube as well uh so once again this is our our question questionnaire time if anybody has any questions please uh feel free to ask and we'll go from there 
if you do have any questions later on, uh, you can always email me at gortiz at dosaudio.com. I'll put this in the chat right now, gortiz at dosaudio.com. Feel free to email me uh, your questions. Uh, if you have any other, if you need any other information or uh, want to know more information about something else, we have uh, these focus, pro I mean, a bunch of tutorials and webinars now recorded into our focus class, I mean, our YouTube. So please check there at DOS Audio Global and you'll be able to see our other YouTube videos. You guys have a good day. And again, this, my name is Giovanni Ortiz, Tech Support and Applications Manager for DOS Audio of America. And this will conclude today's webinar.